Hi, Dr. Bernard here. Cough syrup is for coughs. It's not for partying, it's not for memes. It's not worth messing with this stuff because it will ruin lives. A TikToker chugged one liter of cough syrup at lunchtime. This is what happened to his brain. BW is a 35 year old man presenting to the emergency room unconscious. His mother Gina tells the admitting nurse that she found her son limp on the floor and blue in the face. He had an empty styrofoam cup in his hand. Paramedics tried to give him an antidote for the medicine that they thought he drank, but they had to give it to him three times before he responded, and then his heart stopped beating in the ambulance. You see, BW was a TikToker who played in a band. A few years ago, he was at an after-show party. The host was serving drinks in tall styrofoam cups. In it was soda, candy, and prescription strength cough syrup. This mix is known as lean or purple drink, popularized in Houston and well known to do terrible things in the body, but BW had no problems with this. It's just some candy and soda pop, he thought. Immediately after finishing his first cup, BW felt great. He had the best sleep of his life that night. Whatever was in that cup, he wanted more of it, and the hosts of that party could make that happen. BW's friends used to make fun of him, calling him a lightweight, because he only needed to drink about a fourth the amount of everyone else to have the same effect. About a year ago, BW started making TikTok videos. At first, he did this to promote his band, but then he'd start drinking his cough syrup in his videos. People recognized the styrofoam cups, they knew what was going on, and BW took every opportunity to meme this. One day, BW didn't have any lean left. This is when he'd start to get sick. It would start with a runny nose. A voice in his head would start to echo terrible noises before he could feel his brain start pounding against the sides of his skull. His stomach would nut up and a tinge in his cheeks would come up, bringing him down to the floor. Bile would start to come up and then the dark thoughts would start to settle in. But this is a funny TikTok meme, he thought. And even though his views were good, he'd eventually need more syrup just to feel normal again. Three weeks ago, BW caught pneumonia. The doctor found him otherwise to be healthy. BW didn't say anything about his cough syrup habit, and usually, a lot of people misusing it look like regular people. The doctor gave him some antibiotics. BW tried to ask for some prescription cough syrup, but the doctor told him to get whatever was available over the counter. At home now, BW washed down his antibiotics with his lean. If this is cough syrup and antibiotics together, then I'm never gonna cough ever again, he thought. BW found that taking those antibiotics together with his drink made him extra relaxed. It was like he was drinking his syrup again for the first time. He wasn't really drinking any more than normal. Immediately after chugging a big cup of drink, BW felt good. He showed it all online. He could feel the rush as the minutes passed. He tried to stand up straight. He felt like he was upright, but he wasn't. He walked into the bathroom. Everything was clear again, but then he felt like he was floating himself in. His field of vision started darkening on the sides of his eyes. He sat on the toilet, unsure of where he was as he started nodding off. And as the minutes pass, BW stops breathing. His mom walks in on him. She finds him not responsive, not breathing, cold and blue in the face as she calls for 911 and he's brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, doctors knew this was a case of cough syrup. His mom told them that she found him on the floor with a styrofoam cup in his hand. She knew about his habit but didn't do much about it over the years. Exactly how much he drank she didn't know, but it didn't matter. His heart had stopped beating in the ambulance. His skin was discolored because he had stopped breathing for minutes. His pupils were like pin needles. All of this immediately telling doctors exactly what they need to know. The cough syrup in lean, or purple drink, is a mix of two different medicines, promethazine and codeine. Promethazine is an allergy medicine. It's in the same group as Benadryl. In large amounts, it blocks rest and digest signals from the nervous system, which is interesting because that interplays with codeine. You see, the thing about codeine is that by itself, it's inactive in humans, but when the liver breaks it down, it immediately becomes morphine. Morphine is a natural product. It's from the opium poppy. Actually, opium poppy sap has a mix of morphine and codeine together, so codeine is natural too. Morphine is an actual medicine that's used in hospitals. It's used to relieve pain, but it does a lot of other things to the body. A thousand years ago, Arabic doctors used it to treat diarrhea because morphine slows down the muscles of the gut. 
Slowing down the gut gives the bowel time to reabsorb water to form a proper stool. But if someone doesn't have loose stools and has morphine in their body, then that slowed down gut would reabsorb too much water from the stools and harden them, leading to chronic constipation, which BW had. In the lungs, morphine interacts with the bronchioles and that suppresses cough. So that's why codeine is in cough syrup. But this isn't the reason why BW stopped breathing this time. He stopped breathing because morphine also interacts with the brain. When morphine is bound into nerves that sense pain, it blocks that pain signal. That's why it's a pain reliever. Actually, we haven't really found a better medication class for pain than opioids. But when enough morphine binds in to other parts of the brain, it releases chemicals to deliver a rush of euphoria, which is why when it's paired with other things that prevent the breakdown of those feel-good chemicals, that euphoria is amplified. And morphine binds into the brainstem, which controls breathing. When oxygen is low in the blood, your brainstem will tell the body to try to breathe deeper and quicker to replace it. But BW's brainstem can't tell the body to do this anymore because the codeine in his cough syrup was turned into morphine by his body and has blocked his brain from telling his body to breathe. BW was transferred into the intensive care unit because when anyone's heart stops beating, there's always a chance that not enough oxygen has reached the brain for any period of time. The longer the time, the greater the chance of permanent damage. And in BW, there was permanent damage. A radiograph of his head shows that parts of BW's brain have died from a lack of oxygen. When he regained consciousness in the ICU, his speech was slurred and he couldn't hear out of his left ear. All of this happening because of brain damage caused by not breathing for several minutes, but something's wrong. Codeine in most people is only about 10% the potency of morphine, so you need at least 10 times the amount of codeine to have the same action as morphine. But since you're only supposed to be treating cough here with the syrup, you don't need that big of a dose. But the thing about codeine promethazine cough syrup is that one group of people who drink it for the first time say that they don't feel anything from it. They're still coughing afterwards. It's almost like it's not working for them. Why is that? A different group of people will become habitual users of codeine promethazine cough syrup. They'll tell you that it ruined their life because they start to need it every day, otherwise they can't function. So why is there a difference? And if codeine is only 10% the potency of morphine, and morphine isn't even as strong as some of the other things that are out there, then what happened to BW? This brings us back to the liver. One part of the liver makes morphine out of codeine, but a different part uses codeine to make norcodeine, which is immediately inactive. So this explains why codeine is only 10% the potency of morphine, but why does the liver do this? Well, the liver is the detox center of your body. You don't need fancy supplements or cleanses because you have a liver. Detoxing, broadly, means breaking chemicals down to make them more stable. Stable means that it won't react with other bodily structures because if they react, they could be doing damage. In nature, stable usually means simple. Breaking parts off makes things simple. These branches get cleaved off. In the top case, done by one part of the liver, that's morphine. In the bottom case, by the other part of the liver, it's norcodeine. And nothing more can be done to each of these because these rings in nature are generally stable. But if BW chugging almost a liter of syrup isn't any more than he'd take normally, then how did he suddenly stop breathing? How did it suddenly look like he drank 10 times more syrup than normal? Well, we know different people are built differently. If you're someone who can drink a whole pot of coffee at midnight and be sound asleep at 1 a.m., you might also have a friend who would take a sip of coffee at lunchtime and be wired until the following morning, meaning that you can handle caffeine no problem, but your friend can't. The difference in people is because of differences in our genes, and these variations are called mutations. Do you remember that some people aren't affected at all by codeine? Well, they might have a genetic mutation that makes one part of their liver less functional. This means that codeine never gets broken down to morphine at all in these people. The entire dose gets inactivated. If codeine never becomes morphine in these people, then that's why the cough syrup doesn't work in these people. And if someone has mutations that don't break codeine down to morphine, someone else would have the opposite mutation that would break a lot of codeine to morphine. This means these overfunctional people would turn all of the codeine to morphine. Then suddenly, it's not 10% potency anymore, it's closer to 100%. Do you remember that BW was called lightweight by his friends? Well, if you convert most of the codeine to morphine, then you don't need to drink that much to get the same effect. This could be why he could get away with drinking less syrup than everyone else. But if that's the case, then that means that something even more terrible had happened when he presented to the emergency room. 
You see, the antibiotics that BW took for his pneumonia also get broken down by the part of the liver that inactivates codeine. Actually, that antibiotic packs in that entire part of the liver and doesn't let anything else in. So if BW, by his genetics, turns more codeine to morphine than other people, and the other part of his liver that's supposed to never activate codeine at all is blocked, then virtually all of the codeine that he chugged on TikTok was converted to morphine, flooding his body with a massive amount, much more than he was used to. He was feeling good those first two days, but as more antibiotics occupied his liver, more and more morphine collected to the point where he stopped breathing and parts of his brain became permanently damaged. In the hospital, BW was transferred into the step-down unit as his condition stabilized. Doctors would need to refer him to rehab and more outpatient care, but his time inpatient was coming to an end as he was discharged back home. As the days passed, BW tried to cope. All of those years of misusing cough syrup made his body learn and adapt. If more morphine was around to bind into the gut to slow it down, to bind into pain nerves to block the signal, then the body will adapt and create more of those structures for more morphine to bind in. This is how we believe tolerance and dependence develop, manifesting as withdrawal symptoms. And when suddenly one day there's no more syrup available, no more slowing down of the stomach makes it move faster, so the bile emerges from both ends. No more syrup to block the pain nerves means big pain signals push their way through, making everything hurt. This is called withdrawal. And after losing part of his hearing, BW still couldn't cope with the withdrawal. His thoughts were clouded every day with feelings of doom. He reluctantly got back into his drink. His speech was still slurred, even though his thoughts were still clear enough for him to ignore the rehab referral. He ignored any doctor's follow-ups because he was afraid of what they were going to do to him. One of his friends had suggested that BW start on an over-the-counter medicine used for loose stools called loperamide. This thing, he said, helped him get over the sickness and withdrawal. And so BW tried his own rehab. At first, he took one box of this loperamide. He didn't feel great, but it was still better than nothing. Why not try two boxes, he thought. Eventually, he got to a point where he didn't feel great, but he didn't feel too sick anymore. He didn't care that he needed five boxes each day so that he wouldn't feel as if his brain was smashing up against his skull, so that he wouldn't lay in a pool of his own sweat and bile huddled over on the floor. But as the days passed, this loperamide caught up with him, too. One day, BW's mom came back from work. She walked into the living room and found her son again on the floor, cold, pale, and unresponsive as she calls for 911, and he's brought to the emergency room again. At examination this time, BW had an abnormal heart rhythm. He was shocked back into a normal rhythm, only for it to become abnormal again. His mom showed the doctors the boxes of loperamide that he took. His heart starts shaking in place, not actually beating, and then suddenly, it stops. Doctors rush in to give him CPR, to give him medicines to try to restart his heart. What is loperamide, and why did it stop his heart? This brings us back to morphine. Do you remember those Arabic doctors treating loose stools? Well, morphine's probably not the best medicine for that, given that it can form a very intense habit. Loperamide treats loose stools without the habit-forming quality because it binds into the same structures in the gut that morphine would. But it only binds to the gut and not the brain but at a dose of five boxes, it behaves a little differently. One half of loperamide looks like methadone, which is a treatment given in rehab for opioid withdrawal. So that's how some people think that loperamide can treat withdrawal too. I wouldn't do this because the problem is, people try to take large amounts like multiple boxes of it to try to force it into the brain. And the brain resists this by pumping loperamide back out. If there's simply too much of it, those pumps would get overwhelmed and loperamide would bind into the morphine receptors in the brain to cause the same effect. But the problem is, the other half of it looks just like one part of an antipsychotic medicine named haloperidol. But we don't really know what this means right now for the brain. What we do know is that the other half of loperamide is also shaped like a heart rhythm medicine. It binds into the heart when taken in large amounts, and it blocks electrical conduction needed for muscle contraction, which is exactly what happened to BW. After 25 minutes of CPR, the code was called. Doctors weren't able to resuscitate him. Purple drink, lean, syrup, or Texas tea, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter what the name is, don't do it. 
Even though it's candy and soda pop mixed in, things associated with enjoyment and cutesy fun time, it's evil in the sense that over time, it can and will cause significant suffering. It'll slowly warp the way you live and the way that you behave, and many people who are deep in it may not realize how twisted their lives have become because of it. Maybe some do realize it, and one part of those people are completely helpless in fighting it. You see this happen even to famous people because in their end, they're no different than anyone else. It's not worth it to start. Don't do it. And don't do the loperamide thing either because it's way more risk than benefit, just like it was for BW. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.